it gets watered down. And so the leadership, the education, and the consistently high standards of service, it gets watered down, and that's why people leave. People always leave leaders, almost always. They leave the leader. They don't leave the company. Why do you find a person wanting to jump to another? You'll find, you'll find some affiliates want to go and move to another line. Why would they want to do that? When I was working on this, and I've been working on this for a while, I went in the kitchen one night, and uh, I, I come out of my office, and I, I said to Linda, I said, if, if somebody offered you, and I was being very serious with her, a lot of money, I'm talking about some real big money to go to another company with you. And she looked at me, she, she said, no. Like, she thought I was asking her something bad. I mean, it was just, I shouldn't have been asking. I was just testing her. Why didn't she want to go? She's happy. Do you think Tom would leave, or Bethany, or their family? No. Think Bruce's going to leave? No. Why? Well, there's probably many reasons why they're happy. They're being fulfilled. Everything they want, they're able to get. They're living the life that they want to live. So it goes back to leadership, education, and consistently high standards of service. Now, Peter Drucker is somebody I love to study. Let's look at what Drucker said about something like this. He said, your first and foremost job as a leader is to take charge of your own energy. Now think about that. Your first and foremost job as a leader is to take charge of your own energy. You've got to make sure you've got your head in the right space. You're looking at your business the right way. You see, if you really pay attention to everything that comes from the platforms here at this conference this weekend, and make up your mind you're just going to take one or two ideas and you're going to burn them into your mind and incorporate them into your life. It's with you. Forget about everybody else. It's for yourself. Your first and foremost job as a leader is to take charge of your own energy. And then help to orchestrate the energy of those around you. I remember Earl Nightingale talking. God, I love listening to that guy. And he said, you know, the first order of business is profit. But he said, if you don't earn a profit, you're going out of business. But he said, that's not the purpose of any human organization. The purpose of all human organizations is to make life more meaningful. Well, I think if you analyze this company, this company is making life more meaningful. Now, would you have to ask, as a leader, because you're the leader of your company, are you doing this? Are you taking charge of your own energy? Then are you orchestrating the energy in your own particular group? I believe we are spiritual beings. I believe we are a soul. I don't think we have one. I think we are one. And I think we've got to find an environment that's conducive to the unfoldment of the soul. We've got genius locked up within us. We've got to learn how to put ourselves into an environment that causes it to come out, bring it to the surface. Now, where does tent retention begin? This is something to think about. I was listening to uh, Alex and Brad today, and I'm not sure which one of them brought it up, but one of them did. And retention begins at your very first meeting. At the very first meeting, it doesn't start after they get to a certain pin level. It starts at the very first meeting. And it's more than giving people what they expect. If you're really going to get them to come and stay, you've got to give them more than they expect. It's about exceeding their expectations. And when you do that, you're going to build loyalty to your group. 
Now, there's phenomenal loyalty in this company. And more important, you build strong leaders. See, when you, when you really care about the people, and you're really focused on education, when they come into the business, you've got to understand they are not programmed to do what has to be done to build this business. They're going to have to start doing things they've probably never done before. They're going to have to change their habit patterns. They're going to have to look at this from a totally different perspective, and it's your responsibility to help them become aware of all that. Think of this. People will not leave you or your organization when they feel they're recognized and respected. They just won't leave you. They're going to stay. And you will find that there's phenomenal loyalty in different groups. You go to the top level, there's phenomenal loyalty amongst all the ambassadors and to the company, to the elite of the company. When they're in an environment that leaves them feeling fulfilled, they're not going to leave. They're not going to leave. That's what people are really looking for, and most of them don't know it. A high percentage of the population are very frustrated, and they're disturbed, and they're trying to figure out, you know, what's missing. Well, what's missing is that they don't have a purpose in their life. They don't really have a direction. They wake up in the morning, and they hope it's going to be a good day. But when you do have direction and you know exactly where you're going, you make it a good day. Napoleon Hill said, if you're one of those people who believe that hard work and honesty alone will bring riches, he said, perish the thought it's not true. Riches, when they come in huge quantities, are never the result of hard work. Riches come if they come and roll in response to definite demands based upon the application of definite principles and not by chance or luck. So you see, I think the definite demands is very important. We've got to demand it of ourselves, And then we have to apply certain principles. It all happens by law. I'm very much into the laws. I believe this whole universe operates by law. Werner von Braun said that the natural laws are so precise that we don't have any difficulty building spaceships, sending people to the moon, and we can literally time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. He also said these laws must have been set by someone. But everything in the universe operates by law. Well, when we bring our business into harmony with the law, the business is going to grow. When we bring our life into harmony with the law, we're going to grow as individuals. If we're ignoring retention, we're focused in the wrong area. If you're trying to stop attrition, you don't do it by focusing on retrition. It's like if a person's goal is to get out of debt, they probably stay in debt forever. You don't get out of debt by focusing on debt. You attract more debt. You eliminate the debt by focusing on prosperity. When you start focusing on the leadership, the education, and the consistently high levels of service, you're going to start moving away from a lot of the attrition. So we find people coming in, they want to earn money. Well, the money has to be earned. You don't make money. You'll hear people talking about how much they're making. Nobody makes money. People that make money work in the mint or they're in jail or on their way there. Everybody else earns it. Money has to be earned. Yet it's going to come to them in response to definite demands and by applying certain principles. Now let's come back and look at the mind again and think about what we're dealing with. In the conscious mind, we, uh, we build dreams. And we talk to people about dreams. It's one of the biggest things in network marketing. I think it started with DeVos and then Endell. They, they, they got, they got the, the network marketers really going, and they got them focusing on dreams. They take ordinary people who are struggling. 
Yet they get them to move away from looking at their present situation and build a picture, a dream in their mind. And you know, you can do that very well, but it isn't the dream that controls the behavior. The dream does not control your behavior. So you've got people with great big dreams, but not many cycles. They've got big, big dreams, and they're not building any leaders. They've got big dreams, and the results just aren't there. Yet they talk about their dreams, but the results, why aren't the results there? It's because the paradigm is controlling the behavior. They know nothing about it. Go and ask some of the people in your downline what they know about their paradigms. Most of them don't know. Most of their behavioral patterns, every day, every day, every day, they're doing the same thing. And they're not, they're not working on retention. They're trying to get, and it doesn't work. Joel Barker wrote a book on paradigms back in 1990. He said, to ignore the power of paradigms to influence your judgment, yes, to put yourself at risk when exploring the future. Paradigms is something you don't hear a lot about. You hear more about it now than you did maybe 10 years ago, but you don't hear a lot about it. You don't hear a lot of people talking about it. And yet paradigms are controlling this company. Paradigms are controlling you. You may say, oh, no, they're not. Well, that's fine. But in 54 years of studying it, I'm thoroughly convinced. I work with psychiatrists. I coach psychiatry, and you know, some, most of them have never really taken a look at the paradigms. They get into all kinds of analysis and therapy, and they never take a look. I'm working with a woman right now in Toronto. She's the head of the psychiatric group in Toronto, Tina Chata, very, very bright woman. Yet she's talking about the head and the heart, how the merging, the highway between the head and the heart. There's so much we're learning but we don't learn much about paradigms. Yet paradigms are literally controlling this company. The company operates with a culture. Culture is nothing but group habit. Group habit is a paradigm. But when we bring a person into the business, if they don't look at this, odds are pretty good they're not going to change too much. We've got to help them realize 